Hey guys, Pete here with Pete's How To's and Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how to change out a PCB assembly for a LG subwoofer, a wireless subwoofer. Mine stopped working um, due to whatever reason. Apparently there's some issues with these uh, subwoofers or soundbars. I determined just to purchase a new PCB assembly instead of trying to repair it because I know nothing about repairing it. This specific model that I have is a uh, SPN5B dash w and the pcb assembly i received is a ebr 89625801 the part number for this assembly that i purchased is lgapebr89625801 this is how the assembly looks it's almost identical to the original uh, except for one aspect, which I'll show you a little later in the video. Now to disassemble it, there's eight screws, two at the top, two at the bottom, and then there's uh, another four in, in between. And first thing you gotta do is just remove the screws. So I already removed all the other ones. I got, I just left the top two, and you just take them out. After the screws are out, just grab it and slowly pull out, but don't uh, force it out because it's being held on by a connection. There's a wire that's clipped into that PCB board. That wire is right there. All you do is just squeeze in the little tab and pull off and that's it. And then pull straight out because you do have that little cone that, uh, that goes inside the box. So you can see it's particle board. So be careful when you put your screw back in that you don't strip the holes. Um, you know, so if you, if you can't fully control a drill, just use a screwdriver so you don't destroy anything. This is a new PCB board and it looks very similar. The main difference is there's this coil piece right here. As you can see, it looks kind of like tubular. There's like two tubular copper pieces and the original has like a coils or something. I don't know if that's a main issue that causes this thing to stop working, but that's the only thing I really see it's different on this specific unit. It was a closer look, so you can kind of get an idea how that looks. The next step is to remove uh, those two connections. So the way you disassemble this unit is to disconnect the red connection that you see there. Yours might be a different color and that connection there. There's two. And the other one you pull out as well. But if you notice, I'm pulling on the wrong thing. So if you're trying to take something out and it seems a little difficult, look at the, uh, the new item and see what's attached to it. So in this case, all you're doing is pulling out the actual uh, strip. You're not pulling on that cream looking piece so as you can see the strip just came out that's it so i you know luckily i have the other unit so i didn't try to y f keep yanking on that so just be careful not to yank on that because uh, you don't want to try to break anything off if you break it off it doesn't work anyways um so it doesn't matter but just be careful so all it is is just that strip that comes off the next step here is to remove the actual board before we remove the board we gotta move this small one here and then there's five screws that needs to be removed on the larger board. There's just one screw on this one. And then you got the five screws that are kind of in plain sight in a way, except for the one in the middle, you might miss that. And then you got this one in the middle, so don't forget that one. When you take these off, don't try to pry them off because sometimes it might be held, held on by a screw that you don't even see. So that's it, that's out, that simple. And we're just gonna reverse the process. We're just gonna put this back into place and then uh, put the screws back in. Once again, don't rush the process. And I just want to reiterate, if you are not good at controlling the speed of your drill, do not use it, use a screwdriver. Um, I know quite a few people, non-construction industry, that they use their drills and they strip almost every screw they put in. So like I said, don't um, use a drill if you are not familiar with uh, easing off of the trigger. Uh, now you put this other piece in there, and then all you're doing is tightening that as well. And the next step is to plug everything in. Take the strip and just line it up. Make sure it's facing the way that it was before and you just stick it into place and make sure it's secure. Then you have the red one that you gotta plug in and same thing, make sure it clips into place. And you're gonna hear a clip or a snap sound. That's it. That's done. Now you stick that straight into the hole and then you go ahead and plug the, you go ahead and plug that unit back into the assembly. So it's just one plug. You put it in place, make sure it's nice and straight, everything lines up, and you go ahead and install all the screws. There's no special way of doing this, um, but I did jump around from, you know, different holes to make sure everything's gonna be nice and 
level plug that back in and then um, see what happens see if it connects to your soundbar now what you're seeing here is a green light flashing so immediately as soon as i saw the green light flashing i knew okay it's working because it wasn't flashing at all that thing was dead so now the green light's flashing i'm very excited uh, at this point because i know it's going to work i went ahead and turned the tv on and immediately the soundbar was working i didn't have to do anything else to it so yeah i'm very happy with this my kid's been watching his, his movies and he uh, didn't realize how much of a difference it makes he's six years old and he, he likes the sound it's like being in the movie theaters hopefully you guys enjoyed this video uh hopefully you didn't fall asleep through it and if you stayed awake this whole time please hit that like button and subscribe Stay tuned for more.